When you hear the phrase, soft as steel, what do you think of? While the word steel might conjure up images such as massive high-rise buildings, where does the soft part come in? And what exactly does this mean in our work and in our lives? Welcome to the Soft as Steel podcast with your host, Dennis Duran, featuring engaging conversations with a wide range of industry leaders around soft skills, how we practice love, inclusion, social justice, and compassionate leadership that's everlasting in the workplace. And now, here's Dennis Duran. Today's guest is a great story and an incredibly driven entrepreneur. Shelly Armato is the co-founder and CEO of My Smart Plans. My Smart Plans is a software as a service solution with an experienced digital information librarian as part of a project team who creates transparency, organization, and efficiency in construction projects. They are the driving force behind data governance, which mitigates the risk associated with insufficient document oversight. Shelley and her husband, Dominic, experienced firsthand the effects of chaos in the construction industry. Dominic, a 45-year contractor who was very successful with when one project with insufficient data forced them to shut the doors of that business. Their recovery plan was My Smart Plans which opened its doors in 2003. With over 18 years of experience in the construction technology sector, they have developed core competencies in customer relationship management, team building, and project planning. Shelley has also received multiple awards and recognition for her rule-breaking and extraordinary efforts to solve the biggest challenge in construction, communication. Shelley leads a team of passionate, innovative professionals who are on a mission to create accountability, transparency, and efficiency in the construction industry. They provide a cloud-based platform that connects and organizes all project stakeholders, data, and documents, supported by a dedicated digital librarian who ensures clean and accurate information. I could say more, but I'd like to have Shelley talk about this a bit more and learn a little bit more about her story, the story of her and Dominic in this business. Shelley, welcome to the Soft as Steel podcast. Thank you. I love your title, Soft as Steel. I was like, oh God, that sounds alarming. (laughs) <laughs> it is. It's very alarming. I'll tell you quickly that the name came from, as a book was, uh, my book was close to being printed, the, the name actually came out of a, of a conversation I had with my mentor, a guy named Steve Farber, who at the end of the conversation, book yet named, he said, hold on a second, I got a title for your book. And he said, soft as steel. I said, you know, explain it. And he said, well, you know, steel is to structures and buildings and other kinds of things, what you, what, what the ingredient that makes them something which will last for a long time. Your soft skills, as you talk about them, Dennis, your people's qualities are the things that are necessary for them to build and maintain relationships for a long time. We're in a relationship business. You talk about communication as being the biggest challenge in construction. So we're going to start right there. I think that the premise of your of your business and what you've built over these uh, roughly twenty years since you start open the doors of my smart plans is is incredible. You are incredible and credible by virtue of just the, the handful of of uh, of clients that you reference on your website. You're talking about some major players in the construction industry who have seen the light that you've been shining on the issue that you call communication. So I want you to explain why you say that's the biggest challenge and not something else. Let's start with that. Yeah. Okay. So caveat. So we started in 2006. Oh, three sorry. Years later. That's okay. We got married in 1999. So there's like all these dates floating around. Third marriage. Are you kidding me? I mean, what <laughs> the hell am I doing? We each had kids. You know, I had little kids. His kids were bigger. And we're like, oh, this would be really fun to like, I don't know. What do you want to do, Dominic? Because we both were business people. And we had no idea what the rest of the story was going to be. But here we said today, like, really? Did this really just, this is real. So yeah, we talk about communication as the key in construction. And it's, I mean, it's communication because you're like, what else would you call it? I mean, it's communication. So soft skills in the construction industry is mistrust, lying, cheating, stealing, corruption, document manipulation, all these things. We had no idea what we were disrupting. We just thought it'd be really fun if everyone could make a decision and do their job and defend their contract, because that was what the challenge Dominic had after 43 years. Is He said, I can either go and I can sue. It was a Corps of Engineers project. I can sue this project and spend all my money on a lawyer, 
Or imagine this guy, I mean, my husband's going to be 70, coming to me and saying, and actually we were on an airplane, we were drinking. And he goes, I need to tell you something. I'm like, okay. I mean, this is not, this is an Italian man. He doesn't come and tell me anything. He, he just does his thing. And I'm thinking, shit, should I get another? Oh, okay, there was that cuss word. Should I get another drink? And he's like, well, you might need to. So he takes his phone and he goes, look, Shelly. And I'm like, what is it, babe? I mean, I need my glasses. He's like, well, that project I bonded and bonded all of our assets that I talked to you about, yeah, there's a chance they might call that bond due. And I was like, I'm on an airplane. And you don't know me, but like, oh, hell to the no. Like what? And so he, he's like, well, I've been suffering with this. And I mean, they changed the specification. So I have to go back in after I've already done my job and repaint every one of the, the house. It was a housing project and the carpet's already been laid. And he goes, I think it's going to cost about $800,000 for this project. And I was like, okay, Dominic, we got two choices here. And again, this is on an airplane flying to San Francisco. We got two choices here. We can be victims or victors. Which one do you want to be? And so he was like, I don't know what you're talking about, victors. And I'm like, what happened? How did this happen? What, like, what is the deal? Because he had all these coping skills. Coping skill number one was every Saturday morning, we would go to the cutest restaurant in Kansas City. And just ironically, it would be by the job site, the job trailer. And he's like, you know, I'm just going to run in and check on this job. He didn't want to tell me you can imagine what I have to do in order to be on these projects because some of the things are like, I got to buy paint for the superintendent's mom at a discount because they're helping me with a change order or, you know, the CEO of this general contracting company, uh, they want me to give them money so that they can look good for a benefit and they're going to put it all under their, under their name to look like the hero. But actually Shelly, that's the profit I made on the project. I'm like, wait a minute. I think we need to talk about some things here. So this man, who had been a few words up until this point, basically our life was a Disney World life. I mean, we did things. We had extra, We had an extraordinary life. We were ordinary people. And so then once we realized all this stuff, I was just, I was literally, I can start shaking again thinking about it. I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> Wait a minute. So we did something about it. And it is, it is hopefully we're going to have a story on 60 Minutes sometime. Because it's such a pivotal thing in our in people's lives. Like, are you going to are you going to let something take you down, or are you going to go back like a phoenix and be like, I'm going to I'm going to do something about this? And so <laughs> we did something about it. We sold our house. We took our 401k. We found the best developers. We oh my god. I mean, and at the time it was so intentional. We still live our life intentionally, but it was just like looking back, like how did we sustain and not just lay down and cry because we had our house sold for $650,000. I had the Lincoln Navigator. I mean, I have beautiful jewelry and we were willing. We were just like, okay, we're going to be willing. And so here we are now. Yeah. All right. So again, you still say the biggest challenge in construction is communication. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to it. Mm -hmm. And your solution, the, the the product and service that you've developed and are successfully moving out into the industry, probably with, what's the level of adoption of your process and system in the industry at this point? You've been at it for 20 years. Are you mainstream? Are you still, are you still, you know, facing challenges from competitive alternatives that say they do, that say they do the same thing or say they will bring about the same results or whatever? Where, where are you in terms of, of that? Well, I can... Since we're on video, I can do the whole where we are. So government projects. Folded arms. And I'm like, look, you're going to be fine. We just did our first prototype. It took us seven years for the Air Force to mandate us to the Corps of Engineers. And it was the first time in the history, the history of the Corps of Engineers, no pending litigation, under budget, which people can say that all the time. Oh, we were under budget. Under which budget were you under? We're under the original <laughs> budget. They had the data at the end of the project to run their facility for the next 50 years. And there was no modifications on the contract. Wouldn't you think with those things, they would have been like, uh, where is she? Hey, get Dominic and Shelly down here. Like what happened? They actually did a site visit and they were like, what's happening here? But on that project, we stopped the, the contractor twice from opening closed documents and making revisions behind the Corps of Engineers back, which is actually not the Corps of Engineers. It's the taxpayers because we're spending all this money on these projects and there's no governance. It's just like, it's, I mean, I use the word shit show a lot, 
because it's just like, did you really think that that was a good idea? And so um, we're adopting. We're, we just met with JFK. Um, LAX is talking to us. Uh, they know there's a problem, but we are disrupting like from the core. I mean, not the core of engineers, but the core of life mm -hmm. in the industry. We're disrupting all the way up. Mm -hmm. The insurance companies, the bonding companies, everybody now knows what went on. Like in the industry, they say, well, how did we get here? Like, we're so surprised. How did we get here? And they're like, well, you know, we have all these change orders. And I mean, you know, let's just be friends and just go ahead. You know, you have extra money, you know, in your general condition fund. We'll just use that. And mm -hmm. you're held hostage. And so you have to either say, I'm going to do that or you're going to end up on the evening news was something like one of the projects for the Corps of Engineers was $400 million over budget. And the thing that made me so mad, it's 400 million over budget. It's a hospital. The guy actually posted on LinkedIn, his proud picture doing a ribbon cutting. And I was like, Oh hell no, you don't get a ribbon cut. If you're 400 million over budget, you need to step back out of the ribbon cutting because all the general contractors and all they're all there. Like, you know, Oh, we were such good friends. Uh, this industry, there are no friends. There is no friends. This is not a friendship business. This is a mm -hmm. business based on data. The data then drives the relationship. Doesn't mean you can't be handshakes, but it means that the handshake is going to mean something different. Mm -hmm. So I get all kinds of emotional when I think about all this stuff. I mean, it's just so deep. So, yeah, that's us. So when you talk about, uh, again, about this challenge uh, in communication, you're you're very specific, really specifically talking about the communication that is digital in a written form is available, can be used positively or negatively, uh, and trying simply to to have all of the information, all of the documentation, all of this communication organized in a fashion that it supports a proper conclusion. Yeah, decision making. It's actually searchable, so you can be like blah blah blah. Oh, there's the answer. So that's not heard of in the industry. The more chaos that's created, the more money the change order is going to be. And so we eliminated the chaos. We put the, the lawyers are now like the Maytag man sitting back like, oh, my God, get her out of here. Because they're sitting back in the wings going, oh, you know what? We'll just litigate that. We'll do discovery. And, you know, go ahead and write a check for your money and your grandchildren's money and your great grandchildren's money. Your book will say, wow, I thought I would be able to sue to get this information. <laughs> Such a good idea in the legal field. Mm -hmm. And we're like, no, we're doing pre-discovery from day one. We're tracking all emails. We're tracking the weather. We're tracking every video. We're tracking every piece of data on the project is now in a distribution hub. We decided the other day we're like Amazon, the distribution hub. Because we're the distribution of all the data. We've taken it from all the data silos. We disseminate all the data and then we push it through our distribution hub. And I wish I, I wasn't very prepared. I have a new deliverable. So we actually have a wearable now to the live current set. So it's live streaming. Mm -hmm. Because on a project, you have to walk across to, you know, you have a question. <laughs> you got to go find somebody to answer the question or you make a phone call. And in the industry, a phone call sounds like this. Oh, you're on vacation for two weeks. I leave a message or call this person and see if they can help you. If they're not in, call this person because nobody wants to make a decision because it's, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So bada bing, bada boom. That's what we did. So you used the word. I probably should have put it in the introduction because I think it's, uh, it's uh, appropriate. People kind of understand it these days, and that is being a disruptor. Again, the process that has existed in the industry for a long time improved, and some would say improved dramatically uh, with digitization, project management platforms, all those kinds of, of tools and information streaming that's been going on in an increased way. But it's not, it, it, isn't, it hasn't gone far enough. It, didn't, it got worse because whenever it was paper, you had a paper trail. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Well, here's a paper trail. Now that it's digital, the general contractor is managing all the documents for the project. Mm -hmm. He's also char charging all the change orders. He's also blah, blah, blah. So what happened is, is that in the industry, there's no longer a librarian in the library. Mm -hmm. Or you know what? You can write your own book. It's no big deal. There isn't somebody that's making sure all your books there. So we brought the idea of we're the librarian. So the project runs audit ready, compliance ready, 24 hours a day. And then we're the people that are 
adding all the data, making sure it's organized, looking for all the missing information. There's 18% of the information missing from day one on a project. And mm-hmm. so we're, we're saying, here's the audit trail. Here's what happened on Tuesday the 4th. In a day report, you get an end of day report. Like I get end of day reports from all my employees. I want an end of day report. And so the, all stakeholders get an end of day. Here's what changed today on the project. My goal, and this is probably simple. This is probably so jacked up. I want every person in construction never to miss their family. Mm-hmm. I don't want them to be at the birthday party thinking about, oh, shit, I got it. I mean, I got an issue. No, go to the birthday party. Everything's organized. If you have an issue, it's right here. You can fix it. You can do whatever. And so it's a, you know, it's an emotional thing for me to think about how many, well, I was doing a research and I'm trying to find out how many companies have gone out of business because they're always talking about, well, there's a labor shortage in the construction industry. You know, there's a, there's a shortage of good, of good, you know, tradesmen. Yeah. Because you put them out of business, but like we get it. So now they're like, well, you know, we have a lot of different people for different nationalities doing this work. And, you know, they're not licensed. They're not insured. But we'll take a risk because they won't get hurt on the project. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's what we've resorted to. That's where we're at now as a country. You can't find good craftsmen that do projects because they're gone. My husband's company is gone. And he still gets phone calls. It's so funny. Um, You know, somebody will call and say, hey, my mom's basement, you know, needs this kind of paint and it has this issue and what kind of paint should I use? And I told Dominic, I'm now your agent. That comes with what's called a consulting fee. <laughs> We're not just doing that anymore. And he's like, Oh, I mean, who would pay me as a consultant? Let me show you. <laughs> I'm like, you want the best? You're going to pay for it. Uh-huh. So anyway, he's had a learning transition, you know, but he's 70. He's doing good with the learning transition. Yeah. 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 So you mentioned two specific organizations. So, I'll, so I'll, I'll go back there. You mentioned the Air Force and the Corps of Engineers. Uh-huh. I imagine on that hospital project, the Air Force was the client agency. Um, yeah. It's called DHA, I think. Yeah. Defense Health Agency, DHA. Uh-huh. But they're within the branch of the Air Force branch. Air Force. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you say what owner organizations, I would consider the, the DHS the owner organization, what owners have seen the light and, and are bringing about the adoption of your, of your system? Well, the VA just saw the light. They're building all these hospitals for the veterans, and they, are a, they build these hospitals, and it's just it's a mess. Mm-hmm. So the VA mandated the Corps of Engineers, this is what we want, and the Corps of Engineers went. <laughs> just silence. So, and I'm so appreciative of that because I'm like, I have pissed off so many people, you Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And they think they're going to stop me. They're like, well, you know, we got an email from one of the higher ups and he's like, please uh, refrain refrain from emailing any further. And I'm like, excuse me, I pay my taxes and I can email you at any time and I will continue emailing you. Plus I emailed the president of the United States, literally. I'm like, dear Mr. President. I'm just bold enough to believe that you're going to read this. Dear Mr. President, here's the name and the phone number of the person in the Corps of Engineers that has decided to be a what we call gatekeeper to protect the VA from building their hospitals with accountability and transparency. Please reach out to him and drop my name and see what he says. I don't know who's going to read it, but I'm going to send it. If 100% of the shots you don't take, the answer is no. I'm like, I'm not the no girl. I'm going to keep talking about it. I'm going to keep bringing it to the table. It is so a lot of the core, a lot of the government projects, it's called GovCon, is what they call it, governor, government construction. They make more money suing the government than they make constructing the project. So they have a whole bunch of lawyers on staff. And what they're doing is they're, oh, you know, here, we can get them here, we can get them here. And we're like, Mr. Lawyer, could you please go back and get a job at Disney World because you're not any more needed? <laughs> Maybe you can be the duck and Donald Duck. I don't know. But this is stopping. We are the forefront of this stopping. And, um, you know, there's a huge company called Kiwit. And I was at a conference and they were bragging. They lost $110 million on this huge project. And he was up on the stage and he was talking and he was so arrogant. And I raised my hand. It was the American Arbitrators of, of America, Association of Arbitrators of America in L.A. So I raised my hand and I'm thinking, oh, my God, am I going to ask this question? I said, Mr. Kiewit, do you run your projects audit ready? 
there's no such thing. I said, actually, there is such a thing. And that $100 million that you just spent was actually taxpayers' money because to have a project that you can just get rid of $100 million and still sit up there and brag about it, we got a problem, NASA. And anyway, I ended up texting my mom from the conference. I'm like, mom, I have an issue with not being liked. <laughs> and she's like, oh, shut up. And I'm like, okay, thank you. So anyway, you know, I was just like, that is so hilarious. But I mean, I could not say anything. I'm like, there is a problem. We have solved it. And so then when I got a meeting with Kiwit, they had their underling, you know, get on a phone call with me. And they're like, that triggered a meeting with them? Yeah, it triggered a meeting with them. But it was just another, like, you know, whatever. And they were like, you know, well, we have our system. I said, no, obviously you don't have a system or you wouldn't have lost $100 million on a project. So who is it I need to talk to? And they're like, well, you know, we'll send an email with them. And I'm like, okay, so they think I'm that girl? No, I am not that girl. Don't send an email about me. No, 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 no. I will send an email about you. <laughs> Dear Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> dear Mr. Congressman, dear Mr. Senator, we have a problem. And I mean, I solved it. So who wants to talk to me? So that's what I do. Is that weird? Dennis, am I weird? Some might describe you as being direct. Mm -hmm. Some might describe you as being, you know, following a calling uh, more than building a business. Yeah. That, that, I think that's a constructive way to describe you. And you certainly are, by the latest use of the term, you certainly are a disruptor. There's no doubt about that. But just that single project that you mentioned that kind of uh, la launched you off into a, into a higher space, it would seem to me that are people listening to you more talking as you're talking not about, about your strong feelings about mm. what this all means and the connection, the, the correct connection to you know, tax, taxpayer dollars and all that stuff, which is what makes, gives you notoriety. But when you talk about the service and the system that you have designed, and the results it has produced, are people increasingly listening to that and buying or saying, this is something we need to look into? Yeah. Where are you with yeah, that? Yeah, so we're in the we're in some really deep conversations. I mean, like I was just in JFK and I mean, I was surprised at the alarm they had of helping us get where we need to get and, and supporting us. And I mean, I was alarmed because I know in JFK, I mean, in Chicago, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, in New York, it's, there's so many... Oh, things that go on in these projects that whenever you have everything organized, those things don't go on anymore. So mm -hmm. um, we we our pipeline is really full. We're getting ready to start the Fresno International Airport. Um, Corpus Christi just put out specs with us written in it. Um, we just got our first international project out of Guam. Um, it's another airport. So we do a lot of conferences. And I mean, this has been my challenge is finding my people, really finding my people, mm -hmm. like people that... You know, at our last conference, we had Parsons come to our, uh, Parsons is a huge, huge firm. You can look them up. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, yeah. they came to our, they came to our table and my husband and I are at the table. We don't have a big fancy table. We're just, you know, Dominic and I, we have a little sheet, a little table called that says stop the change order games. And I wear a pair of orange tennis shoes and a little shirt that says stop the change order games. And Dominic <laughs> conservatively dressed because he's not going to wear the t-shirt. But anyway, so Parsons <laughs> to our desk. And um, they're like, you know, we need to talk to you. I said, go on, go on with yourself. There's nothing here for you to see. And so they're like, what do you mean? I go, no, just go on. You're not interested in transparency and accountability. You guys are part of the problem. Go on past our, no, you're not even getting candy. Go on. <laughs> and so Dominic's like, Shelly, I mean, you know, I mean, I just watch Dominic, watch what happens. So here they come back and they're like, we want to talk to you how do you guys feel about being acquired? I'm like, for what are you going to acquire us for to put us out of business so that we can go away? Uh, no, that's not a good idea. Well, anyway, so it's been so funny because they keep calling back. Well, how did the, how did New York go? Well, actually New York's going really well. Well, um, because they're trying to figure out, wow, we might have to change all of our business practices because of this little chicky that told us to get away from our table. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, you're going to have to change your business practices, people. You'll be fine. You will be fine. It's about 20% to the bottom line of the general contractor that we bring back to the project. Unless there's litigation, then we're priceless, which we've never had one of our projects ever litigate, ever. Because they already know what happened. There's no trying to figure it out. It's like right here. This is what time you saw this. It was 242. This is what you did. This is what we know, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll be better off for it. But I'm just, yeah, you're right. My calling is 
to do to do better, to do good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And our industry can use that. And that's why I was I was so intrigued by you and wanted to just to get you on here so we could so I could hear your story, hear you talk about it. The way you do it is, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be on the other side dealing with you. OK, we well, have a funny story. So Turner Construction was going to hire us for this project. And anyway, I end up, you know, going to their office because the guy won't return my phone call. So I'm thinking, are, first of all, I thought is, are you OK? I mean, are you sick? So I go to his office and and they call him and, and he comes walking out and he's kind of like, you know, like, oh, my God, I'm going to have to tell her no. So anyway, he says, you know, we've decided something different. And I mean, before I could come to my senses, I had him pushed up against the wall, not touching him. <laughs> He was backed up against the wall. He's like, man, man, wait, wait. I mean, I wasn't the one that said no. I'm like, I'm not even saying anything, but my force is with you and you will not tell me no. So anyway, I hear my husband like, Shelly, Shelly, Shelly. Oh my God. I'm like, (laughs) oh God, Dominic, I'm so sorry. So we get in the car. He goes, I didn't, I have never seen you. I'm like, don't tell me no. I appreciate a conversation, but no is not the option. So anyway, it was just, I don't even know what came over me. I'm a grandmother. I get the right. I have six grandchildren. I can do whatever I want to do. Yeah. Write, write a letter to Santa Claus, I always say. Like, he will respond. But, yeah, I'm not going to take no from you. So that's my that's my thoughts. So uh, this is almost ridiculous. We're almost out of time. But I, I want you to – I'm looking at your at your wall. Yeah. And I, st- I see the Stop the Change Order Games yeah. thing, and I get that. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about those other words. And, uh, and I see disruptor, obviously. I see guarantee, transparency. Yeah. Just what are all those words to you? Yeah. Well, I mean, right here is the word that means the most. That's my husband because he decided to be a superhero to the industry. So I got a bobblehead. But his head's a little crooked. So, um, yeah. And then underneath here is my new home I'm building in Disney World. So I'm like, this is my this is my wish law, wish thing. My grandkids, flying pigs you know, Wonder Woman, because I'm like, okay, I'll put on the costume. But all these words are what we bring to the project. You can be kind on a project. Now, you don't have to go in and be cynical and think you're going to steal from me. You have strength because you have strength in the knowledge. It's transparent. We know what happened. uh, And they know what happened. We transform your project with time, talent, and treasure, which is actually a Bible thing. I mean, it's time, talent, and treasure. Is that amazing? Like, we give you back your time. We give you back your treasure. And we protect your talent. Um, and then mm. defend, I mean, all these things matter, but this one says she needed a hero. So that's what I became because when my husband is sitting on the airplane and he is, I never saw my husband. I mean, he was on the verge of cheering. If he could cry, I think he would have cried. And I was like, huh, I need a hero. Okay. I have to become one because it took him a couple years to really fully uh, I don't even know. He was just like, what am I doing, Shelly? I'm going to go tell them what? I'm like, just, I'll go do it. Just, it's okay. So um, we, he still laughs. I mean, we just had a call this morning and the guy goes, your husband is so amazing. He's your yang. I go, I know. Mm-hmm. He's my yang. I know. And he keeps me organized. He tells me, you know, we had a funny story. We had a meeting in uh, Vicksburg, uh, Mississippi with the Corps. And for some reason, I thought I was going to Mobile because I'm not the detail girl. So we're flying there and he's like, babe, let's see how close the hotel is to the, to the arena. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, well, it says we're going to Vicksburg. It's Vicksburg. He's like, we're landing in Mobile. I'm like, we have a problem. Okay. So we ended up renting a car and we had three hours of marriage counseling all the way to Vicksburg. (laughs) And we're like, we laughed out like, oh my God, the alarm of like, we have to be in Vicksburg. Like, in the morning and we're going to drive. So we drove across Mississippi. We had so much fun, but I mean, at the time it was not fun, but looking back, we're like, that was hilarious. So he loves to tell people she had me go into mobile. I'm like, look, make the reservation yourself. I can't solve all the problems, but <laughs> <it's organized. laughs> all right. So if we were to use a few words to describe your soft skills, mm-hmm. what words come to mind? Oh, kindness, service, yeah, I'm not the girl that's sexy and flashy and all those things. I'm the girl that when I get off an airplane and somebody doesn't have a wheelchair, I'm the girl that's going to push the wheelchair. I'm the girl that when I get to the pick up my suitcase and I look around and there's somebody that's old, I'm the one that gets their suitcase off of their off the thing and gets them to their car. Um, I'm going to be kind first, and that allows me to provide service. And so 
I'm the girl that um, I just adopted this family. Oh my God, they have 10 kids. They're from a camp, a refugee camp, and they speak Swahili. And um, I found the little girl. And I mean, every time, it's, mm. it's so funny. I had a, I found a translator and they tell the translator, that lady comes to our house all the time. And I'm like, well, yeah, you have nothing. You have, you have nothing. We're in Kansas City. It's cold. It's warm where you came from. So coats and blankets and food. And, you know, Dominic and I, we fed mm-hmm. 15,000 men at Sydney New Mission because we knew that when we're, when we were trusted with this thing that we created, we knew that we had to do God's work and he would do our work. And so I answered, uh, there was a radio thing. They're like, we need volunteers at City and Your Mission to prepare meals. I'm like, called. I'm like, yes, I would like to volunteer, me and my husband, once a month. And they're like, ma'am, there's 350 people. Are you going to buy the food or what? I, oh, no, my husband's Italian. He'll go ahead and cook. So I'm like, okay. I call Dominic. I'm like, we have a little bit of a problem. He's like, what's that? I'm like, well, I heard this radio. They needed, you know, blah, blah, blah. So you're going to be cooking. Can you cook for 350 people? And he's like, I think so. So we went into City of Mission and we totally transformed City of Mission. And then I got fired because I was supposed, I wasn't allowed to speak because I love speaking and encouraging. And I could only stay in the kitchen. And I'm like, okay, did you not see me? <laughs> but they had just awarded me CEO of the year. And I'm like, I'm probably pretty much going to take over your job too. So can we be kind to these people? Because everybody gets down on their luck. I mean, it's not, mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are. Everybody gets down on their luck. So if they're down on their luck, can you just love on them? I don't know. That's what I do. So I would say kindness and service. Is that my soft skill? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I like it. I like it. Shelly, this has been uh, almost uh, like in an instant, our time is up, which is kind of ridiculous. But, you know, kind of my last thought is I certainly understand our industry over a long period of time to understand why adoption would be so so challenging for even the best intentioned owners and general contractors because there's so many the, the notion of 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 being uh, of being clean factual transparent all those you know important words uh, you know there are implications for 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 how people do business uh, and you're, you're, the disruption you're trying to bring about is let's let's mm-hmm. let's go with let's go with the real facts mm-hmm. and make better decisions and be able to make them in a in a more timely fashion. And the net result is the end user is going to get a project for the price they thought they'd be paying for it with no uh, no after problems. Is that is that sum it up yeah. pretty well? Yeah, I have to use one word that I'm going to have to delete. Okay. Use the word try. That I was trying to bring this to market. Oh. That is not a word that's in my DNA. Yeah, you've done it. So I am bringing this to market. Mm-hmm. This is going to happen. This is the wave of the future. This is someone's going to see me in the rose garden one day because I am not willing to sit idly by and think that someone's going to be my gatekeeper and tell me right. no. Appreciate you, but I mean I'll just go around you. Yeah. So there you go. Right. You can sit back and you can be in the back seat. I don't know, but like this is not an option. It is not an option. I. I have such a passion for our children and I mean, we're going to leave them with so much debt. And, you know, the other day I saw at uh, at a stadium, the roof fell on the stadium. Well, who did that roof? We don't know. Yeah. (laughs) You know, a bridge fell. Well, who was the contractor? Well, it's going to take us a couple days to figure that out with our system would have been two seconds. The thing in Miami, when the condo fell, we would have been like, Oh, where's the shutoff valve for the gas or whatever. Two seconds, two seconds, two seconds. And so it saves lives. I mean, it's, across the board, good for everyone. So we're bringing good to an organization of construction that has been known for challenges. Yeah. Yeah. I would be uh, foolish and wrong to disagree. I mean, we, there are a lot of problems and I mean, your term was chaos. I don't think that that, uh, that term is out of, out of field at all. I know we'll stay in touch. I mean, I I just, I'll just call you once in a while just because you're fun to talk to, but, um, I appreciate your coming on the podcast, and I think what you're doing is is really important for the future of the construction industry. So keep doing it. Yeah, I think it's for the future of our country. You yeah. know, the construction is such a critical part of our country's infrastructure. Yes. And yeah, so yeah, and tell Dominic I said hi. I will let him know you said hi, and I won't tell him that you know I talked about the airplane thing, but I probably will. Yeah, you'll tell you'll tell him whatever you want to tell. Him. That's you know that's the whole thing. Thanks for being on the podcast. Okay. Thank you. 
Thanks for joining us today for this episode of the Softest Steel Podcast with your host, Dennis Duran. Dennis is the author of Softest Steel and a leading speaker and trainer for organizations across many industries and verticals. To learn more about the work Dennis is doing to activate soft skills in the workplace, contact him at DennisDuranSpeaking.com. Be sure to check out his book, Soft as Steel, on Amazon or wherever books are sold. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or wherever you'd like to get your podcasts. And please remember to share this episode with your friends, colleagues, and anyone you feel would benefit from the conversation. We'll see you next time on the Soft as Steel podcast with Dennis Duran. Produced by Autovita Studios. Connect your voice to the world.